what we cleverly, cleverly refer to as our high bay. And in here, we do manufacturing on a lot of the large pieces of parts for our operations. This large room next to me is an environmentally controlled paint booth where we do all of our painting and coatings on large pieces. We can just wheel them in, close the doors. It keeps the United States and Ohio Environmental Protection Agencies happy with us because we actually send out cleaner air than we bring in once we go through our filtration process. But as we walk through, you'll see some gentlemen working on fins and other pieces of parts. We try to do as much of the repair and refurbishment as we can on our own. When we need to bring in outside technical help, we do send parts out for refurbishment. But this group supports the three North American airships. Our G20A airships, they haven't changed a whole lot since the 1930s when they were a training blimp for the Navy. We have updated avionics and materials on board, but the same basic design hasn't changed. We'll go through this facility and then into the low bay where we have a gondola under restoration at the same time. Probably the company's biggest recycler because everything that we take off of the airship, we try to repair and refurbish and put back into service. It's got to be pretty much absolutely worthless for us to get rid of it. And I've got the stacks of stuff around here to prove it. But what we do, if you are unfamiliar with the process, we will take a piece off of the airship, usually after a rebuild, completely strip it down. Our technicians and our aircraft mechanics will then go over the piece with a fine tooth comb and compare it to drawings and engineering deviations and orders, make sure that the piece has been structurally sound, the integrity is good, and then they go through the complete refurbishment process. This gentleman over here, Gary Shunk, is one of our aircraft mechanics with the spirit of Goodyear. He is repairing a fin getting it ready to be completely refurbished. But he will go through every joint, every rivet, every piece of metal on that fin to make sure that it works right. And then once he verifies that it is structurally good, then it goes through a skinning process where we'll put the skin on it, which is seekonite shrink wrap material. Once we've done that, we coat it, shrink it down, put it into the paint booth, paint it, and set it aside until we need it for another rebuild or a repair. Same process goes with the nose battens that you see draped over the shelving over there, valves, engine cowling pieces, just about anything. We've got the talent either on board or a group of retirees that supports our group that can do most of this work. The other thing you might notice is there's no number one in tires on this side of the airship. There's two reasons for that. This sign has a day sign capability that you saw the other night at the picnic. Bright red LEDs that fit into a very small grid. The number one in tires was obscuring some of the visibility of that sign. So I got our executives to agree to take the number one in tires off of this side so that the day sign was more visible during the day. Another reason, just as important, there is a network in the United States that will not show the airship if it has number one in tires on it because they say it's an advertisement and we have to pay for it. So when we do events with that network, which will, we can turn this side of the airship to the stadium or the venue and just have the Goodyear on it. I help to <clears throat> sway the executives by telling them with the day sign we can put anything on there, number one in tires, number one in hoses and belts. So having number one in tires on there and decals is really kind of superfluous. Eagle Vision <coughs> excuse me, is a collection of 3,780 LED boards that are all attached by several miles of wiring. The bundle goes into the gondola just above the wing foot on the Goodyear logo on the car, and that attaches to a small box that, for the lack of a better name, we'll call a magic box, and then that attaches to a computer, and it converts any text, graphics, animation, or even video into a format that makes the lights blink off and on so that you get the patterns that you see. We are currently the only airship in the world with this technology. It's a competitive advantage and we're extremely proud of it. More than 60% of the messages support nonprofit and public service groups. Only about 40% are company messages. But it's something that we try to help use to promote national charities like the United Way, Muscular Dystrophy, American Cancer Society, etc. It is capable of literally thousands of different color combinations, but because the human eye can only discern about 256, we have it set for 256 at this time. 
it can run video. The next generation sign is what we're really excited about because the next step in this is going to be like a giant jumbotron where we'll be able to run replays of events right on the side of the bag. We'll capture it right off of our TV camera and put it up there. That'll help us be more of an influence with the networks because over the event, not only can we show replays, but we can run promotional programming for the networks. Watch West Wing, ABC Evening News, things like that. We hope for that to also be another inducement to get the networks to use us for their major events. The airship is powered by two engines. We're going to give you brochures at the desk up front that has all the technical information. But they're two 210 horsepower engines. We fly along at about 50 to 55 miles an hour's top speed. We generally cruise at 30 to 35, so we're not in a big hurry to get anywhere. In a typical day's travel, the airship will launch, start out at 35 miles an hour. The crew will tear down at the airport and start traveling. They'll pass the airship on the highway, stop for lunch, the airship goes by them. They get done with lunch, they pass the airship, they get to the airport, set up the stuff, and the ship will arrive. That's usually how we like to have it happen. Sometimes the airship arrives early, or sometimes if there's headwind, it takes a long time. But we tend to travel anywhere from 100 to 180 days a year per airship. We do 60 or so major TV events a year. Uh, it's really cut into our opportunities to support communities, uh, festivals, fairs, things like that. But we still try to fit a few in. The rides are all by invitation for major customers of the company and members of the news media. The only way the public can get rides are by the rides we make available to charities and nonprofit groups for door prizes and fundraisers. We help to raise about a half a million dollars a year for charities, and we are the company's single largest source of charitable contributions. So between the signs and the rides that we give away for uh, charities, it's a benevolent side of the airship that I'm extremely proud of. So we've got three basic missions, the TVs, the passengers for our major customers, and then the aerial sign missions. Here at the Wingfoot Lake facility, obviously we've got the world's oldest active hangar. We have a hangar facility in Florida that can house two airships side by side. This one, we will occasionally put two airships in here nose to tail. In August, the Stars and Stripes will stop here on its summer tour, and we'll have two airships in here at that time. California does not currently have a hangar facility. We utilize the old hangars from the Tustin Marine Base when we need to do periodic or routine maintenance. The two large yellow tractors you see at the end of the airship are mules. We use that to help hold the tail down as we go in and out of the hangar. So as we go out or we come in, we don't get a crosswind that pushes the airship into the doors. They tell me that would be a bad thing and I believe them. But this afternoon when we start to operate, they'll crack the doors open, everything goes out in one movement, nose and tail, and then they'll cut the tail lines loose and take the airship out to the mooring circle, load it with passengers and ballast, and away it'll go. And we'll operate passengers until about 7 o'clock, land, and then we'll go up for an aerial sign mission until about 11. Any questions before we move back up front? How much does this... Uh sign weigh? The question is how much does the sign weigh? The sign altogether, LEDs, wires, boards, uh, the magic box, things like that, it's about 500 pounds. And because we operate with the concept of lift, that's why we don't have another sign on the other side at this point. We've got just so much lift and power available and what we want to do is uh, eventually as the power requirements and weight requirements come down, we will put another sign on the other side.